Hey, welcome back, Zero K fans. Back, I should, I did some jumping jacks. I should be a bit more alert and awake. I should hopefully not get distracted by conversations I had hours ago and forgetting when I am and where I am. I should be able to maintain lucidity for the next hour and a half. Because that's probably how long yes. it's going to take. Our next game, Comet Catcher, will be awesome. I guess both will go Feagles. Yep. <laughs> probably. Well, this is in Culta. Oh yeah, right. It's going to no. be Comet Catcher at some point later on. We're playing in Culta Wet, though. <laughs> because of course we are. <laughs> yes. Yes, thank you, Hokomoko. It's going to be a meme thing. <laughs> whenever the game starts to distract, whenever I'm getting distracted, not, not sure what to say, just talk about the English Civil War. Oh, apparently the game is not starting? Okay, Skazi's going to be back in a sec. So we're going to be getting, when is it? What are we waiting for? Seriously, stop doing <coughs> this. <sighs> okay, well, anyway, I guess we'll just... Take another brief intermission, or, I don't know. Seriously, I don't know why... Skazi and Orphelius have both been... Okay, mid back. And Why does Orphelius want to sleep? Orphelius, you're in Austria! It's, like... Oh, 3 p.m. Sparta to free. Yeah. Huh? Why are you complaining about sleep? You're... You've been only up since, like, mid-morning. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's playing from a proxy. I don't know. It was like, look, I can complain. Like, it's 5.45 a.m. here. I haven't slept since last night. No, Skazi's in Austria. Skazi's in Austria. You're right. Or free this is in Poland, but the time zone's close enough. Might be quarter to four, I'm not sure. Still. Oh, Skazi had to go to the bathroom. Whatever. Anyway. That's that's fair enough, I guess. Wait, what? Crash? Hmm. So big maps that make people crash. Okay. Well anyway, yeah, Matt last map was in balance with Mexes. In Cult of Wet, not quite so unbalanced. That's that's the thing about this map. This map is actually fairly fair. Yeah, it's, it's symmetric. Uh, really designed with the tournament games in mind, if I recall correctly. Was it? Oh wow, okay. Because it seems like just in Culta, but with the water yeah, level in Culta, I mean, but somebody just altered the water level variable and then <laughs> published it as uh, in Culta Wet. Yeah. I think you can do do this just from the the game lobby. Yeah, you can actually. There's, there is a mod option you can do before the game starts to set the water level. Yeah. In this case, it's just that the water level is set as part of the map itself. Anyway, Anakin and Yurga wow. both going for ships once again, as they did last time. Orphelius and Skazi, neither of them have chosen their position, nor have they chosen their starting factory. No indication of what the strategy is right now, though I'm not sure if you were listening to them on Mumble, Flores. No, should I get a Mumble? Nah, I wouldn't worry about it too much. We can kind of see what the strategy is when the game starts, and as it continues. Anyway, Orphelia is oh, going oh, for Hovercraft, oh. and Ships is Skazi's factory of choice. Overall, 
Not surprising. We haven't seen many amp openers. Not in a while. We have seen them on this map, just not recently. And Orphelius... Oh, apparently got messed up a bit. Everyone else started out pretty much on time, on opening. We have early Skeeters coming up from Skazi for early scouting. Early Mariner coming up from Yurga, confident about what they have. Anakin going for early scouting with Skeeter. And Orphelius is... They just have the factory for decoration. <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh, never mind. They're actually, da, 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 they actually da, using da, da. it. Never mind. My mistake. Sometimes I can't tell. Anyway, Yurga is deciding to go for snakes. Only one of the, the couple of Skeeters for the purposes of scouting. <laughs> Which makes sense. Skeeters are good scout. Although, um, last game we saw was just snakes. Straight off. Snakes. That's all it was. And yeah, Die Schlange. <clears throat> Snakes. Oh, is that in Dutch? German. Okay. Anyway. I was listening to Ophelius singing. Um, but Ophelius is Polish. Yeah, but I wasn't referring to... Okay. Anyway, anyway. Ophelius was singing and it was funny. Okay, well anyway. Anarchid and... Anakin is actually losing this Skeeter to Skazi, or was losing this Skeeter to Skazi, being disarmed. Skazi still managing to get a fair amount of information out of this. Not quite... Have they quite seen the factory yet? Yes, they have. Okay, they know what the factory is there. And they are well aware of exactly what's going on. So, at this point, both teams pretty much know what the other's up to. Although Skazi, not totally making it clear that they're going for early submarines. But yeah, they are going for early submarines. As is Anarchid. And there already were some submarines built up for Yurga. So, really, the builds are pretty similar. Well, Yurga showed that you can uh, win the game by uh, building mostly submarines. That's true. A Yurga did show that. Although Yurga is doing that again. Mariner, Mariner Snake. Use what works. Anarchid going for Typhoon Hunter. Going for much more surface oriented play. And Skazi going for Snake Skeeter. Interesting. I think an anti heavy from the looks of it. And, of course, daggers for the raiding purposes. Going around back, too. Nice, clever. I like that. Ophelia's going around back and should be able to get rid of... Well, one of the Skeeters, yes. Yeah, one and of the, the Metal easily. Extractor. The Snake should go down pretty quickly. Oh, no, the Typhoon's in the way. That won't work. No, 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 no. Good retreat. Orphelia's getting out of there, as is generally wise. Unfortunately, one of the... Does the dagger get out of there? I don't know, because that dagger got stuck. But it looks like it won't. Oh, maybe it will. Oh, it will. It did! The yeah. urchin. No, Boom. it didn't. Actually, the urchin will kill it. Boom. Oh, that dagger got so close to escape. <coughs> Very nearly escaped with its life, but alas, it was not to be. Anyway. It's nice. Orphelia's made a lot of raiders. Uh, yeah. No destructors. Orphelia's is in a pretty good spot to help just break around all this. Just get around this area, try to break up some of the more, not quite entrenched areas, but the less entrenched areas. Now keep Jurgen and Anarchid on their toes. Although, right now, Skazi's going pretty heavily for, it was raiders, like snakes. But look at Jurgen, he has a commander on one side, constructor there, he has a constructor in his base, he just finished the nano turret. Yeah, Jurgen's got all the constru oh, wow, Jurgen has all the constructors for sure. The snakes as well for good measure, but then again, like I said, daggers do pretty much beat snakes pretty directly. Especially when you so consider for it's cost. 210 versus 90, so it's about yeah. two and a half dagger per snake. And that's pretty close to how many it takes to one-shot a snake. So that's that's scary. There's a lot you can do with that. Skazi is also, Orphelius is just making use of that and pushing forward. And the Typhoon becoming a bit of a problem, but at the same time, now Skazi coming in with subs to get rid of the Typhoon that way. Or at least slow it down, allowing the daggers to have a much easier time dealing with it. And Snake's able to finish it off, and down goes the Typhoon with the loss of a couple daggers. Very economical. This is a good combination of snakes and daggers. Mm -hmm. And nice coordination, too. I gotta say, Skazi and Ophelias yep. are really making sure to keep each other covered. Doing a wonderful job that way. Acting like true teammates. And that's how you play, that's the best way to play. Yep. 
So Skazi, I'm not sure what they're planning on using the Skeeters for. They're, I don't see anywhere the Skeeters... Like, I guess the Hunters would be useful. But no real heavy units have come up for the Skeeters to really kill. And Yurga losing more and more submarines. Although, more daggers are going down too. Our Phyllis is losing you know, a dagger or two every fight. And that's adding up. And but it even then, just, just failed to help his ally. Yeah, and this is... I mean, all the damage Skazi and Phyllis are doing, that is... That is impressive. Yes, that what is it? Them a lot. 350, 700, well, let's say 1,000 metal worth of units not defending. Oh, wow, yeah, there's, yeah. Three big, kind of moving out. relatively expensive ships. Four, actually, it's nearly 1,500 metal worth. Yes. Straight on assault, too, although that should work against the daggers decently well, but Skazi. They do have the Skeeter around here, which should be of some use. And the Dagger's going to try to do what they can, but really the Skeeter is almost necessary in this case to deal with the Typhoon. At the same time, Skazi oh is boy. getting out of position. Skazi not defending their ally. And Anarchid going for a very strong attack. Although one of the Hunters is going to go down Yeah, but doesn't work. But they're, they're not... That Typhoon's the biggest threat. That's the one they need to get rid of. That's the one they need to get rid of and they're not doing so. No. Okay, there we go. The Skeeters are in. But it's still going to take quite a few shots before the thing's disarmed. Too many. Urchin on the land. Hmm. Ah, that deck was way safe, actually. Urchin on the land is a great idea. It means that anything in general, you don't. In, th in this phase of the game, it's not a good idea to go straight for the enemy base. It just. No. It hard, barely or hardly pays off. And this map is kind of hard to raid around your enemy around the base. It's Usually, there's a lot of defenses hit. and such. Yeah. The sights at this point get yeah. small advantage hit the there. Center. Like hit here or hit here or hit here. Don't hit here or here. Because there's just too much defense there. Or try to economically whittle down your opponent's army. Make sure that they keep their army mm. kind of stagnated while yours grows. Speaking of economy, we have 90 versus 60 something. Yeah, Jurgen and Anarchid are getting quite ahead. I mean, despite the lack of a lot, of, despite the massive loss of a lot of units from Anarchid, they still expanded quite heavily, and as a result, they have a huge amount of the map. They have more than half of the map right now. Not counting the center, mm. of course, but no one really has the center at this point. Yes. And Skazi tr looks like they are setting up to take it back, or at least to destroy it. Mm, Jurg has a nice force of uh, submarines there. Yeah, there's no easy way that Skazi's going to be actually able to succeed in that task. But they're going to try. Presumably. And there we go. We have snakes going over. A couple of them getting rid of the Mariner. More going over to the north to try to... It looks like they're trying to bait out Yurga snakes, but not going to be able to do any real damage. In fact, losing all their snakes at the cost... None, none of Yurga snakes died. Only his constructor. That's what yeah. I was about to say. I think cost-wise, you can almost use uh, constructors as uh, plain dirt bags in these snake battles. They can take up quite a lot of uh, snake hits, mm -hmm. and they are m cheaper than a snake, actually. 200 versus 210. Certainly. So that might actually work, just to build them as uh, uh, punch back. Shields, yeah. I don't see that being done, though, much. I don't know if it ever would because be. Because the first snake in line is going to die anyway. <laughs> yeah, especially when it's in a line like that, a single file. but. Yeah, Skazi at this point really running low on units. Not really having a whole lot they can work with. Not, I mean, they have, they've gone straight to Crusaders now. I think it went straight yeah, for the artillery. So Anarchid attacks. The, all the raiders much. go after it. And now the south is undefended. And he could run in with all those snakes. Jurga, I mean. Yeah, Jurga so definitely could. On there. Massive amount of army here. And that's being sent to the north. Where it's actually fairly well defended. Wow. <laughs> Anarchid's attack survived. Retreat yeah, well, my Crusaders goal. can't oh. hit, but yeah. At the same time, though, the Skeeters are going to stop it. And the Snake. There's not much to be done. I mean, slowing it down is probably going to cause it to get killed by the Skazi, Crusaders. I think Skazi started making fusions too quick, too early. Oh. He uh, already made three of them, or is building his third. Yeah, it's a little bit risky. They don't have any... There's no units to defend this. In fact, I think that I think it's about five minutes to death. 
I'd be surprised if it was any different. They're like, red teams losing units left, right, and center. Jurgen and Anarchid have Jurgen in particular has not been losing any units at all, pretty much this entire game. No, they can pr the probably states. waltz in within the next five minutes and win. Be hard pressed at this point for Skazi and Ophelia to get the units they need. I mean, they are still at the point where type counters would win. I have to get enough riot units to get enough of the hunters. I don't think there are really okay or any underwater riots. Do they exist? Hunters, sort of. But they claymores are broken, of. right? The claymores are, yeah. The claymores are good. Hunters just need a decent amount of them. Yeah. But if still, you so need to field your riots in a one-to-one -one ratio with the unit they're supposed yeah, to counter... Yeah, it's not really a riot at that point, <laughs> is it? <laughs> yeah, I think Crusaders are a bit more useful in that respect. Yeah, Claymore is definitely the one to go for. That's the one that Claymore. That everything. Boom. Or not? I said everything. Everything includes itself. It <laughs> yeah. kills everything. Oh, it's on hold fire. That's why. Well, I can understand the rationale for that. It's probably a <laughs> better. Oh, Orpheus is already saying no. Yeah, Orpheus and Skazi. Wow. Mm, Orpheus can do it. Yeah. So that's game three. That was... That was quicker than I expected. I, you're going to just turn it around by keeping the units... They, they cloned it out. And they made it work. And that was... That was brilliantly done. So well done to Yurga. And then that means Skazi and Ophelius are going to be choosing map 4, or game 4's map. And they'll need to win this if they want to have a chance, otherwise this is going to be 3-1 Anarchid Yurga. That is what they need to do. Yeah, that was... That was considerably faster than last time. I think Yurga kind of figured out what they needed to do to stay alive. Because last time they... <laughs> They were losing more units in the last game on Inkolta. Yurga had a harder time keeping their units alive, even though they, they did keep the units alive quite well. And Anarchid just... They just went for it. I think they were maybe over-aggressive, but whatever. <laughs> At this point, it doesn't seem to matter. Okay, so... Moving on to game four, which I don't know what to expect from like, Ophelia and Skazi do not have like any. What do they even have? Like, Ophelia and Skazi, they they have a decent amount of skill on large maps. Like they're they are good at economy. Ophelia, however, wants to play cheesy. But there aren't really a lot of maps you can play cheesy on in 2v2. But overall, there isn't a whole lot that they have as options that I can think of offhand that are obvious. Yeah, Skazi and uh, Ophelius were also discussing the submarine. They didn't know how to count your uh, oh. submarines. Yeah. Seriously though, if you have, maybe not quite as many, but about half, uh, a third to half as many riots as there are submarines, Right, the riots scale better than submarines, but it's not like warriors. They don't just slaughter everything, but they do scale better. So in larger numbers, you need like a third to half as many of the hunters as you have as your fighting serpents, and then the hunters will outright win. And tear them to shreds. Hmm. Oh, okay. Rymark pointing out that submarines are also terrible against static defenses, so urchins will win. Against chaotic armies. Not sure what that means outside of amphibs. Amphibs would make sense as a counter, but not... I don't know what you mean by chaotic armies, Rymark. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, they're pointing out that... Rammer's pointing out that the subs are bursty. They're very alpha-focused. And they're so, fast. 
Yeah, so if you throw a bunch of light units, I guess... I guess ducks wouldn't be a bad idea. For ships, I don't know, but for amphibs, I could see. Then you could throw in a bunch of ducks and then follow it a bunch of... Follow it up with a bunch of scallops, and they just hit everything and destroy everything. So, there is that. I could see that being an option. But even then, I'm not sure what what map would they go for. I want to see something like Wanderlust or I don't know. Maybe the bullets go for Comet Catcher. I have no idea. Maybe it's an odd one. Hey. Well, they are not making anything clear what they're choosing. I just to point out that it looks like we have Sprung listing out all the stats and replays and such as the games progress, which is actually kind of nice, because one thing I've found when trying to do all the YouTube stuff Trying to figure out which replays are which. I mean, it was nice in the one we've been turned because there was names for everything. Oh, we're playing Titan. Not Titan Duel, but Titan, the, the very large map. That's when we're on. Anyway, yeah, so in the last one, there was there was names. The rooms were named by group and everything. In this one, they aren't, but Sprung is kind enough to actually go through and figure out what all the replays were. Yeah, and thanks so to Sprung. Run through here. It'll be a lot easier when I go through and actually do all the YouTube construction. It'll be some time tomorrow. Like some time on Sunday, I'll be throwing up YouTube videos. But yeah, when I do that, I'll have the replays to work from more easily. Alright, so we are going to be on Titan, which is a map similar to Titan Duel, for those of you familiar with that, but not actually that similar at all. It's got a similar aesthetic, but the actual map itself yes. is has a much higher... Like, it's got a much greater height gradient. Like, the difference between top and bottom, there's actual choke... or there's a lot more choke points that are much more obvious. There's a lot of high <laughs> Lots more metal. Lots more metal. I mean... I'm not even sure why it's being... Is there a lot of massive maps that have been used? I don't know why they're being picked. But yeah, they're being used over and over. I, just, I don't get that. I really don't understand why that is what's... What is being used. But apparently it is. That That is what the players want to play. I I have no idea what position them to want to play on those maps, but apparently they do. I. Okay, well, apparently the players are ready, and we'll be able to show off the map in more detail in just a couple, in just a minute or so. Why is it not working? Oh, that's why, because force start has an, force has an R in the word. That's why. Really? Yeah, and Lowry forgot that Force has an R. Huh. Fos. Yep. They're trying to Fos start. That does not work. I got a text message. Fascinating! From our Welcome to the from 21st our century. Wow. From Orphelius, nonetheless. Wait, what? You mean on your cell phone, or... No. On the lobby. Yeah, on uh, Mumble. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought you meant your cell phone. Like, well, that that's not that amazing. Anyway, so this is Titan. It's actually totally different from Titan Duel. Hey, I got internet on my phone. And just uh, a couple weeks ago. 
Oh, fair enough. Welcome to the 21st century. <laughs> <laughs> so, Titan, as you can see, is a map that's it's much more focused on terrain, a high variation. There's the big high areas here that you can go up to, go down from. There's these irregular mexes. Yeah, some irregular mexes. 3.15s here on the top and another 3.15 in the center. Geothermals pinwheeling around the main center of the map. And also more paths going up, as well as another 3.15 over in the top and bottom that are basically only accessible other than by air through a single ramp. So a little bit harder to get to and defend, but also a little bit harder to attack. I don't know what, I mean, spiders I could actually see being used here. But we haven't seen spiders at all mm. in this tournament, so I have no idea. It's a bit big for spiders too. You are right, that is true. That is absolutely correct. Heavy tank and you air are for Anarchid and Yurga. No spiders. That's right. Huh. No spiders. I am disappointed. I still wouldn't take spiders on this map. No, it, it's too big for that. One or two areas where they can be okay ish. Maybe in a 5v5, it's okay if you have a very specific task to conquer yeah. a specific area of the map. But or if you scale this, this down by a factor of about two. <laughs> Then they'd work. Like mini Titan. <laughs> yeah. If you did that, then it would work okay. But on this, no, that's not going to work at all. Like your miniature giant space hamster. Yep. Rainbow colors. Anyway. So Orpheus, on the other hand, going for light vehicles, and no indication of what SCSI is going for at this point. Both players kind of focus on center. I mean, that's the thing. You're going to have people focusing on center and northwest or southeast. Not a lot of people in southwest and northeast, just because they're a bit harder to get around, although it's not as big of a deal as, for example, Red Comet. And actually, SCSI is going for the north, sorry, the southwest, and going for air start on a hill. So light yep. vehicle air versus heavy tank air. And this might be the last game. It's match point for Anakin and Yurga. If they can pull this out, they win. They get first place. And they they win the last tournament of the year. And Yurga ends up becoming pretty much the 2v2 champion. Having won at least two, I think three. Of the five, four of tournaments? The, of the six 2v2 tournaments. We started in February? Yeah. Well. First one was in February. I think that was when the Sabi and Yurga won, actually. Ah, the Sabi, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sabi and Yurga. But uh, Orpheus is kind of, is feeling kind of down. <coughs> and yeah, tired. I know. Not sure and then why. He's but... going to play uh, silly. Well, he's going. They're going for slashers, and that's not silly. That's that's perfectly normal. There's nothing unusual about slashers. Especially yeah, on a map this slasher. Size. You see them a lot on this map, actually, and uh, it works pretty well, also. Mm hmm. So this is pretty usual, as far as I can tell. And the darts not being used to scout, which is, well, he's being used to take out this, just stake out the center. You know, make sure there's an eye on this 3.15 max. You know, make sure they know what's happening, which is a good thing to do. While on the other hand, we have Skazi taking care of the more direct scouting, going into the opponent's base and figuring out what is going on in there. So at this point, do they know? Like, do they have any idea? Oh, they do. Okay, so they know the factories. They know it's been built. They've seen everything there. But look how quickly uh, Anarchate is taking Maxis. I know. There's the, there's the commander. There's... Sorry, not, that's not the commander. There's commander down here. I was looking at Yurga for a sec. There's the welder up front. And that's about it, actually. But they are pushing forward a lot. Yeah, but that line of Maxis in the back is very easy to uh, to get to take. Yeah, the commander's taking all that. And the red team is completely... Ignoring that those mixes. Skazi more importantly, because Skazi, their commander, they could have kind of gone back from where they started to take all that. Or they could still do so. The His constructor just exited the, the factory. Well, Orpheus' constructor, yeah, and Orpheus is going for the oh, back. Sorry, Orpheus, yes. Skazi has not built any constructors yet. Skazi is going entirely for Swifts, as is Yurga. Yurga, wait, does Yurga really have no, no, Yurga has no crane. Yurga's going purely for Swift. Anarchid, on the other hand, does have Panther. Does have Welder. Also getting Panther on top of that, just for the extra 
boost just for the damage, you know, because attacking you is kind of necessary. inner kid made four turrets before the max. He was really scared. Oh, yeah. I thought it was going to be the two lotuses. I didn't realize the two lotuses do defenders. That's a little excessive. <laughs> it's, yeah. So, and then one slasher comes to crash the party. Pretty much. I mean, the one thing I could kind of see about doing that would be if you're going in a bit of a wider line. Like you're not focusing entirely on one metal tractor, but you're kind but of Look at the battle incomes of both them. teams. It's 13, 16 and 9, to nine 10. So 19, 29. Yeah. Ah, the blue team is kind of running away with this. They've been doing that all this time. I mean, Orpheus now, just now, had the mason that was building up all the all the metal that was needed. <laughs> and it could he's not doing that at all. A, uh, HLT, a hot gun. Where? Oh, yeah. Right inside of all those other turrets. Of course they do. Of course they do. That That's just, that's a thing. Doesn't even have that much range, either. I mean, it's not like... Yeah, its range is still fairly big. It's just... Compared to what... It's kind of funny. If you look at the range circles, the two lotuses are just inside... Or barely... Slightly barely outside, but basically just inside the range of the stinger. It's very close. Oh, they're, yes. much, they're almost coincident. They almost... Or they, are, they almost touch. It's kind of amusing. Anyway, Orphelius, a bit more scouting with the darts, but that's doesn't appear to amount to much. Not sure what they're planning on doing. Half a dozen darts. You don't usually scout with that many unless you spread them out a lot, and they're not being spread out like scouting. No, that's okay. Uh, yeah, they're cheap enough. Darts it's not the do, deal. do do damage. They do. That's what I'm saying. It's like the way they're being set up seems more like an assault force or a light raiding force. Yeah, I think they're that that we're doing one anything. of the most underestimated units in uh, Silver King. I agree, especially when you consider their damage. They're actually about half the damage of a of a dagger, I think. If I recall correctly, daggers are 110 every two seconds, and they're 55 every, or no, 110 every second, and they're 55 every second. So two darts is effectively one dagger, I think, if I recall correctly. But there have been changes as well, so I don't know if that's still true. Yeah, HLD, do your job. Well, this no. Is not going to end well. <laughs> no, it won't. Although that Ravager is almost dead. Hey, I built Pork Park on my own part of the map and it pays off. <laughs> this shouldn't work. <laughs> oh, God. Wow. <laughs> that Poor actually features. worked. That I... It's like the only spot on the map. <laughs> that there's a massive... And that's also a low ground. And that's low ground, too. Relatively speaking. Oh, God. You did have a raider, dude. Yeah, but the slashes were really what was needed. Like, scout it out with the heavy <laughs> you just had to walk slashes. around the turrets. Like... Yeah. I don't think you can see that line, but... I don't have the line visibility on, but I can turn it on. Yeah, I see it. Okay. No, the slashes are actually outranged by the stingers. And a Reaper, because why not? Anarchy can afford it. Can afford an yeah. army of Reapers now. Ah, oh, now can reclaim the stuff. Oh, Anarchy is playing uh, uh, chicken. Well, it's not a bad idea, especially when you have just one Reaper. Don't go too far forward. No, I was more referring to the line of turrets and the nano turrets. To, uh, oh, yeah, Orphelius as well. I think I see a bit of... No, it's not... A bit of what? No, I thought I saw a lack of energy, but it's not the case. No, no, everyone's pretty good for I energy. don't know where Orphelis is getting his energy from, but he has energy. Three solar collectors. And... A bunch of wind generators at the bottom, which are right now running at plus 1.1. Maybe that's it. Plus 1.5, yeah, that's quite a lot. There, are, It's just a lot of wind at the moment. Yeah. Oh. Nice shot there. Skazi's taking a few of... Taking a few of Yurga's cranes, but not all that many. And that Swift does not die. Gets out of the way as the missiles just miss it and hit the ground and behind it. But at the same time, Skazi coming in with their own air... Wait. 
Skazi and... No, Skazi's the only one there. Just came in with more swifts, but that didn't do much good. Like, Yurga is really ahead when it comes to air control, and that's probably gonna stay that way. Yurga's also switched over to Clothed Factory into Zeus. Zeus Hammer. Just like last game. Could've been a warrior. Or not last game, but last time this was done. It was two games ago. And Skazi... Better get once more turrets. Yeah. And Skazi is pushing all the wind generators. Anarchid's turret... Where are Anarchid's turrets? I mean, the center, yes. But I don't see him... Oh, yeah, oh, yeah Cobra. Yeah, HLT Cobra and uh, Cobra. Mm-hmm. And so few raiders. And Yurga also building up a wall. Because why not? Or sorry, a trench. Small trench over to the north, just to make sure that they can't be hit by anything vehicle. And nothing vehicular can get through. But that's fine for them because they're primarily actually well, that's Orphelius is building that too. That's still fine for Yurga because they're all air. Or cloaky. Hunter Kid doesn't like metal extractors. He prefers turrets. Apparently, there's all these metal extractors here, nice juicy metal extractors, and they haven't taken a single one in this area. I don't know, some people. Uh, the game is strange. It's like people don't want to move. It's very static. Which is odd. Not... Jurgen and Anarchid should. I mean, I can totally see Skazi and Orphelius are going to be nervous. Like, they are backs against the wall. They've got to make sure they play it safe. But Jurgen and Anarchid, they can do whatever they want. If they lose, it's not a big deal. They have another game. I don't know why they aren't playing a bit more forward and trying to just win it. Now save their energy. Take it now. However, they are still getting pretty far ahead. A little bit surely. And Yurga, wow. So a pretty even split, about 16 Swiss per side. Between Skazi and Yurga. And Orphelius not yet losing their forces, but it's getting close. And it looks like the pillager here is gonna be able to get rid of pretty much everything over here. As are the hammers. So to the center of the map, we have a lot of artillery being starting to get pinned down a bit. Though I think a tremor is in short order. Well, no Tremor so far. Anarchy does not have that queued up. Still Pillagers. Those are doing a decent job. Yeah, They're I think not they'll Tremors. Do, they'll do fine. Ooh, that, that was a nice hit too. Hit a leveler. Bit of a fluke hit, but still worked. And a Newton because why not? Orphelius is really building all the turrets. But like I said, Orphelius is going to be kind of nervous. Skazi is going to be kind of nervous. That really makes a lot of sense. Big AA. Ah, there. This is what I meant. This is what we needed. Raiders. <laughs> like half of the map was had no defenses. Everything was concentrated in the center. Hmm. But now time, we got a bunch of claves. It's exactly what this game needed. I see. I actually I don't. See. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, yeah. Wow. That is a lot of raiders. Oh, yes, there we go, okay. That is a lot of glaives. Trying to figure out where the heck they were. He's out of damage, too. Not all that much, though. The Swiss are doing a great job defending. Still, very nicely done there. So, bit of damage, quite a bit of damage dealt. Ophelia's lost a fair amount of their economy. They can rebuild it, no problem. I'm a bit concerned. Why are there are there no crane? There are no cranes. One. Oh, Skazi has a crane. Oh, yeah, Skazi has one crane. Okay, there is two, that. and there's one at the back. Oh, that's true. And there was one actually rebuilding all there's the. There's an assault. There's something happening. There's a doomsday yep. machine. Another. Well, I think the bigger thing happening is the fact that there's a bunch of glaze and reapers coming on, on the north side, basically trying to get round two against the north side against what they just destroyed. Though DDM is still a pretty important story. Wherever Even it is. if it's only a heat ray, it's still dangerous. 
Yep. Although, with a pylon, I mean, the pylon's almost there. Like, one more pylon and that'll do it. So I think that's probably gonna happen pretty soon. And we're gonna have that raining death in the main base, because what is the range of this thing, anyway? Oh, well, I can't seem to tell. Maybe the range isn't that big. I thought it was, I thought the range was huge. No, apparently the range is 650. It's actually not that big at all. Okay, never mind. And the damage is 1,200 every three seconds. Okay, but not sure. It, oh, I guess, okay, yeah, for the cost, I guess that makes sense, actually. Like 1,200 is not bad. I mean, considering that usually units that have that much damage are about 2,000. No surprise. I mean, Glaives over the west side of the map, dealing all the damage that needs dealing. Getting rid of all those back mechs, having no defenses in the way. Skazi and Orphelius are so behind as a result of this. It's kind of There's a reaper in your base. And Ravager's coming in as well, but yeah, two reapers. Getting rid of these factories. And is that a scuttle? That was a scuttle, but it didn't do much. Who has jump bots? Oh yeah, Skazi has jump bots. Okay. But the Glaives tearing everything apart. Ravager's trying to counterattack, trying to get rid of the DDM, but not able to do so. Able to get rid of a pylon, though. And with South, Galeas need to attack, <laughs> Reapers continue to attack, Reapers getting rid of everything that Orphelius has, except for what happened in the center. And Yurga basically tearing apart everything Skazi had in the low ground. The high ground here is the only safe area left. That's about it. And that's Just really a matter, matter of time. time. As we both say, yes. We agree. Those windmills are awesome. It's a lot of energy. <laughs> Look that's... at Skazi's energy income. Yeah, that sure is. Yeah, it's like, I think he, he, he overspent on energy too early and he completely and... ignored the top. And Orphelia's overspent on defenses way, way too much. Especially in the center. Uh, yeah. Did not consider the north. Didn't consider that was an opening that they had to deal with as well. And that's it. That's the tournament. I guess so. That's a 3-1 uh, result. It's not bad. Yeah, I mean, that last game was a little bit one-sided, but the rest of them were very even. Yeah, and the first two games were nice. Yeah, especially, and also some of the earlier series too. I mean, I think outside of this, my favorite one was definitely the Skaziophilius Mosh Sino series. That was that was tense. I didn't know who was gonna win that one. Yeah. Like the Ry Norman Reimer put up a really good fight, but yeah, the second semifinals was so close I could not call it. So that is going to be it. Anika Yurga, congratulations! You win the final 2014 tournament. The final 2 v 2 tournament for 2014, especially. Yeah, congrats to Enerkits and Yurga. Yes, and Yurga in particular for being part of winning teams. Probably, I think, the most out of anybody in this year's tournament series. So next year, we're going to be having, I think, this again. But there's probably going to be some changes. Like I said, I don't think Kudos prizes are going to be a thing anymore. And I'm going to... I kind of want to experiment a bit. Like, talk to people who are organizing it. And possibly think about experimenting with double a limb, at least for the 1v1 tournament. And but what about 3v3 tournaments? Maybe. But given that 2v2 tournaments are hard enough to get people, everyone in for, I don't know how well 3v3 tournaments would work. Like, as it stands, hard, it's hard enough getting everyone here. That is true. That is correct. Like, with 1v1, at least it's not that big of a deal if you have to sub people out. And 2v2 is a little bit difficult, but still not as big of a deal. 3v3, though. We have to really work out some of these issues. The organizational issues. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you, Floris, for joining me. So Thanks for having me. Yeah, Zero K still is a cool game. Sure Most is. Most definitely. And with that, I... Bid you all farewell and good night. Have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays of various other stripes. Right, whatever whatever your winter feast is may be celebrated with the greatest of pleasure. And for now, have a good night, everyone. Yeah, have a good 
afternoon or a good morning or a good night.